or if I need it, five plucker. So this is taking me from Grassmannian to N into projective space N, N is N choose 2 minus 1, uh, is an embedding. Right, because it takes it takes the affine piece mij not equal to zero into, into pn with the uh, ij coordinate not equal to zero. Uh, I, I'm calling the coordinates also mij. <coughs> and, uh, sorry, this is n. And <coughs> uh, is the same as the graph of a map, the graph of a function, there. Right, in fact, we get, we're going to get just a little bit more than this. So, this function, m i j equals, so if i and j are greater than 3, then what is this function? This function is a I, B, J, minus A, J, B, I. And now, uh, you know, now I'm, uh, <coughs> I'm going to uh, sort of uh, uh, cheat a little bit and not worry too much about the order that I write down these uh, minus and not worry either about the signs plus or minus one. So what, what I want to say is that, uh, uh, you know, so this mij is one of the coordinates. So in terms of projective space, uh, this guy here is linear, whereas these guys there are quadratic. So I should really do, really, this should be m12, so this is 1 times mij equals m, now, uh, you know, I, I don't know, this is 2, 2i m 1 j minus m um, 2 j m 1 i. Okay, or, or something like this. So I don't really care. I don't really. I'm going to. I'm going to tell you a better reason why these, uh, why these, why these equations hold later. In any case, but but you, you understand what I'm doing. First of all, I say these mij's, the higher mij's over there, are just functions of the first mij's, right? But however, the equation I'm writing down here is not homogeneous, so it can't be an equation in projective space. However, we're working on the affine piece where m12 is where m12 is equal to 1, and so we might as well just multiply this. If I do this, this is a quadratic homogeneous equation. In fact, it's of a very special form. Yes? And uh, as long, when this guy is 1, I haven't done anything, I haven't changed anything. But now I say that this holds as an identity. Right, so, so this is the first, the first of the Plucker equations, so we're going to see all the Plucker equations now. So these uh, m i j is a i b j minus a j b i, and so you know up to plus or minus. <coughs> so I say I say the following: for all i j k l. So you know this is. Uh, 
mathematics that was very well understood in the 19th century. So I'm using 19th century notation and uh, way, uh, ways of thinking about it. So if I write down mij times mkl minus mikmjl plus m i uh, l m j k this is zero now this is identically zero okay so you know I gave a sort of reason for it so if you think about my reason for this here is I'm saying if m12 is not zero then I can change the matrix around a bit so that M12 is just the identity matrix. So this, uh, so this front end of the matrix is just the identity matrix. And then I have the ith column and the jth column. And um, uh, the, the 2 by 2 minor there is this multiple. Right? And so, you know, that's an argument. You can believe it or not. It's an argument by reducing to normal form. Right? So, so this, I say this is an identity, I say we don't have to, we don't have to think, all we have to do is write down uh, this expression here six times, multiply it up and see what we get. Right? So let me, let me see if I can get this right on the blackboard. This is A, I, J, A, B, I, you know, let, let me just write it and stop talking. A, J, B, I times the same thing with K and L. So it's A, K, B, L minus A, L, B, K. And then it's going to be minus A, I, B, K minus A, K, B, I times. So I'm doing I, K, J, L. A, J, B, L, minus A, L, B, J, then plus A, I, B, L, minus A, L, B, I, times A. What is it I'm trying to do? K, L, now, K, J, K, J, B, K, minus A, K, B, J. Okay, so do we, do we believe this is identically zero? So, uh, you know, there are, so each of these, there are two terms here, two terms there, so that's four terms. There are 12 terms written on the blackboard. So, you know, you can ask, for example, where is A, I, J, B, A, K, L? Where is this product? So where is this product going to appear again? So I want the A, I, to be paired with the BL and the BJ to be paired with the AK. So it's, that's happening here and it's also happening here. AI BL minus uh, times AJ BK. Okay, and now uh, we get to this place that uh, I wish I'd uh, chosen the signs more carefully. Have I got, have I got this exactly wrong? Uh, this is I want A, I, what do I want? A, I, B, L, B, J, A, K. Okay, so that's here and here. And so by some strange miracle, uh, they do actually cancel. Right? So, so the, the terms appear here with minus. Okay, does anybody else want to play the game? So for example, can anybody see A, I, B, J, times A, L, B, K. I've got to have B, J and B, K together and A, I and A, L together. Anybody see it? So the term I'm talking about is this product. So where is he? That's a, it's plausible. Anybody see it? You can do it. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I mean, uh, I, 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 
I don't, I'm not offering any guarantees that the signs actually cancel in this calculation, but if I had done the calculation right, then the signs would all be cancelling. So there are 12 terms there, and uh, there are all, all, all of the possible expressions AI, BJ, uh, AI times AJ times BJ times BK, where, where the four, the four IJKL appear once each. Yes, and uh, so, you know, there are 12 terms there, and there are really six terms, and half of them have minus sign. So why should you believe this is true? So uh, one idea for trying to prove it is this, reduced to a place where one of these, well, one of these matrices, one of the two by two blocks is really just the identity, and the other one is AIs, BJs, and so on, and then the, the bigger, the more complicated term is a function. So, 1, 0, 0, 1, uh, you know, A, B, C, D. You calculate all the 2 by 2 minus, you're going to get A, C, A, B, C, and D as the 2 by 2 minus, and then you're going to get this expression here, A, D minus B, C. Right? And the, uh, the, the equation is just saying that A, D minus B, C is a certain product, a certain, you know, sum of products of, of those terms. Okay, so, uh, you know, this is, this is a proof by brute force. Right, this is a proof by reducing to normal form. Right, and I can give it another proof which is, uh, just makes it completely obvious and completely trivial. So let me write down the following matrix. Let me write down the matrix A, I, A, J, A, K, A, L. B, I, B, J, B, K, B, L. A, I, A, J, A, K, A, L. B, I, B, J, B, K, B, L. Okay? So I ask you to calculate this determinant. Okay, so what do we get? So, so, so look, the determinants, I've written down something here which is uh, zero for trivial reasons. This is zero just because it's got repeated rows. In fact, it's got two repeated rows. It's trivial for two different reasons. Yes? On the other hand, I can think of this as, on the other hand, this is this little minor, this is Mij times Mjk minus, and so on, this, this guy, M, I'm sorry. <coughs> this is a sum of six terms from take corresponding to the 2 by 2 minus of the top row, of the top two rows. Yes? So it's, it's this guy here multiplied by this guy, and then it's the next guy along multiplied by this guy, and so on. And with alternating signs. If you, if, you calc if you think about calculating that out, then what you get is exactly twice this. Right, so this is twice the flipper relation. Okay? So, you know, I mean, all of these, are, this is sort of calculational and depends on the choice of a basis. So now I want to say that this is, you know, sort of more intrinsic. So as I said, if you do a calculation if you do a calculation in terms of a basis, then you should have a bad conscience. You should think about, can you do it without a basis? So, you know, uh, I've done the operation, and now can I do the same operation with my hands tied behind my back? So, uh, so uh, intrinsic treatment. So, uh, in other words, uh, what happens if where 
not allowed not allowed to use a basis. Can, can we do the same? Can we say what the Plucker embedding is? Can we, uh, can we do all this calculation and can we figure out what, the, uh, what these equations are? So, uh, I'm not quite sure about getting the equations right, but uh, there is a nice intrinsic treatment. So, to start with, what is this so what is the vector space of P n? n is n choose 2 minus 1. So this is a projective space. It's got from an n, n plus 1 dimensional vector space by div dividing out by the standard equivalence relation. And so what is this projective space? Right, so, so I'm going to, this is definition, uh, wedge 2 of V. So, uh, so unfortunately I don't know, I don't know how you were taught linear algebra here. So, uh, but anyway, this is the universal... This is the universal solution of skew. Skew means skew symmetric. Skew is anti-symmetric. I'm going to write skew rather than skew symmetric because it's shorter. Yes, this is a universal solution of skew maps v times v, skew bilinear maps v cross V into a vector space W. Okay, now uh, I don't know exactly how you were taught uh, linear algebra at uh, uh, Sogang or the other Korean universities. Right, well, this is just an, another way of saying I'm going to take two vectors, A1 up to AN, V1 up to BN, and map them into the set of wedge 2 of, uh, of this. So, I map this into A wedge B, and this is the set of 2 by 2 minus. Right, so this is what to do when, when, we're, in a, when we're in a basis. Okay, so what is, this, what is this expression? So, given V, Right, I'm going to take V cross V into W and uh, this is supposed to be a skew and bilinear map. So the V, v tensor V cross V into W. So, so I should ask, except I know very well that you'll answer no. So uh, is there anybody here who has not seen the definition of tensor product. Yeah, okay, okay, so some people dare, dare to answer. Very good, very good. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, you could do uh, U tensor V, sort of basically similar. Uh, but I don't, I, don't, I, don't need, I don't need this. I'm, I'm doing this uh, from first principles. So, I, I, I've got this map, um, let me call him, uh, what's a good name? Sigma. Right? So sigma has the, is supposed to have the property that, so, so sigma is a, is a function of two guys, you know, v1, v2. Right? So I take a, vectors in v, a pair of vectors in v cross v and I map them to w. And I want this to be linear, uh, bilinear, right? which means if I do lambda v1, prime plus mu v2 primed and then v2, uh, sorry, v1, oh for God's sake. I do lambda v plus v, this and v, I get sigma of lambda, I get, uh, sorry, I would not make a very good linear algebra lecturer, lambda sigma 
v primed v plus mu sigma v double primed of v. So I'm just saying this is linear as a function of one variable, right? And then it's also linear as a function of the other variable. So that's bilinear. So, you know, uh, early, earlier, in the, earlier in the course I had symmetric bilinear forms when I was talking about quadrics. Now I'm doing, uh, now I'm doing skew symmetric forms. Right? And skew, meaning that v1 wedge v2 equals minus v2 wedge v1. Right? So there is a universal solution to this pro property. There is a universal solution to this namely uh, there's a vector space W so in other words uh, wedge 2 of V is, is equal to the, the space generated by all expressions Uh, v. Um, uh, let, let me let me say v went wedge w. Right. So it's a vector space. Vector space over k. Generated by all expressions like this, and then divided out by. So linear. Linear in v, meaning, uh, lambda, v. 1 plus mu v2. The same thing I was trying to write down before. Wedge w is lambda v1 wedge w plus mu v2 wedge w. Right. Linear in w, which is the same, the same kind of thing, and uh, v wedge w equals wedge w wedge v. And also, let me put in for good measure, v wedge v is zero. Right, so, so, so you, uh, this follows from the previous one if you're in characteristic not equal to two. If you're in characteristic two, you need that one. But anyway, I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about it. And uh, thank you for spotting that deliberate mistake. There's a minus there. Okay, so... So, 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 so look, throughout this, uh, throughout this lecture I've been using 2 by 2 minus and I've been using determinants as uh, calculational methods. If you want to say what a determinant is in pure intrinsic linear algebra without choosing a basis, then you have to go through this routine. Right? So I'm just doing something which is... Uh, which is standard linear algebra, but it, you can do it with a basis, and then it's just taking 2 by 2 minus, or you can do it without a basis, in which case it's this intrinsic business. Okay, so, so this is a vector space of dimension, of dimension n choose 2, and if uh, E1 up to E n is a basis of is a basis of uh, V then uh, E i wedge E j for i um, for 1 less than or equal to i less than j less than, less than or equal to n is a basis of wedge 2 of v. Okay? Because if I've got any complicated vector wedge, any other complicated vector, then I use bilinearity just to separate them out into single components. And if it, if, if it ever happens that j is bigger than i, then uh, I, swap them, I can swap them around at the cost of putting a minus sign there just by using this rule. Right? And so, uh, I mean, this is, a, this, is a, this is a proposition. I've just proved a proposition. I've proved that this vector space exists uh, uh, by just writing down this, this expression. So this is, this is easy. Don't, uh, uh, um, it's, 
It's confusing because it's abstract, but it's a really very, very easy uh, thing. So anyway, uh, then what I'm doing is I'm saying uh, the, the map Grassmannian now of 2 and V, two-dimensional vector space of the n-dimensional vector space V, n-dimensional vector space but without a basis, embeds into projective space of V, wedge 2 of V, and it's given by E maps to wedge 2 of E. Okay, so uh, this is a two-dimensional vector space. Wedge 2 of it is a one-dimensional vector space because 2 choose 2 is equal to 1. Right? It's contained in uh, wedge 2 of V because E is contained in V. And furthermore, if E has these basis elements, if, a, if E is based by these two guys, then these two guys are just some combinations of these vectors, e, e, i, and e, j. And uh, when, I, when I do that rule that I expressed spoken in, uh, in spoken, I just use bilinearity to write out wedge of two complicated vectors in terms of sums, sums of, uh, then I just get, uh, so, so this means that, uh, you know, sum a, i, e, i, wedge sum of V i E j B let me write B j E j maps to uh, here sum of um, M i j M i j E i wedge E j yes So, so the only point I'm making here is that this construction here uh, does not, uh, you know, I, I, I give the instruction, I, I give the construction in terms of, in terms of taking a two-dimensional vector subspace here give, in this given basis to this string of, uh, string of numbers, to this string of coordinates. However, the, what I've written over there is completely intrinsic and is exactly the same thing, right? And so, in particular, this is GL of V equivariance, right? If I choose the basis in, if I, if I, if I change the basis in V, then that automatically leads to a change of basis here, and the map is compatible between the two. Okay. So uh, I want to. I want to say this just a little bit slower in uh, explicit cases. <coughs> so, so, how do we write Uh, a point of wedge 2 of V. So, uh, the, question, the question is this. Uh, if I say quadratic form, then you all think about, you all can go back to think about places in linear algebra or places in mechanics or places in undergraduate mathematics where you use quadratic forms. Quadratic forms immediately means a bilinear form, symmetric bilinear form. Symmetric bilinear form immediately means a matrix. And so I say answer skew symmetric matrix, a skew matrix. So, uh, so let, let me, I, I, I don't want to do this in complete generality, but let, I just, as I said at the beginning, I want to do Grassmannian 2, 4, and Grassmannian 2, 5, right? And the others will be similar. At the moment, I can do Grassmannian 2, N, right? And so there are going to be N choose 2 minus, 
So, so by the way, when I'm saying this, I'm saying n choose 2, so of, of n objects, choose 2. Right, so it's a binomial coefficient. Uh, okay, so so what am I doing? What am I doing here? Is I'm going to write down m one two, and m one three, and m one four, and so on. So let me let me continue just one more step. One five. Let, let me do let me do this case. Then I'm going to write m two three, m two four, m two five, m three four, m three five, m four five. Right, and now I'm going to close brackets, and then I'm going to imagine that I've written zeros down the diagonal. So zeros on the diagonal, and here I've, I'm going to write down anti-symmetric. Right, so you know if I have to write it out in detail, it's going to be minus m12, minus m13, and so on and so forth, and we'll be here all day. Right. So now, where are the what are the what are the Plücker equations? So so I told you I've got the the Plücker embedding. It takes it takes e into wedge two of e. Right, and so if E has a basis, for example, if E is, um, uh, you know, uh, E comma F, this is just m getting mapped into vector E wedge F. Right, so all of this is contained in the vector space wedge 2 of V. Right, and a general element, general element in there is of the form is sigma a i j e i wedge f j. Right? And so this guy here is quite special. So this guy here is, this is a bilinear form of rank 2. Right? Or if you like, he's a primitive. He's a primitive uh, uh, to, 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 to uh, whatever it is, to, to, to the vector. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a proper name for this. Right? So this space, wedge 2 of V, as I said over there, is generated by all of these expressions v tensor v wedge w right on the other hand v wedge w the general element in here has you know it's a combination of hundreds of these elements it might be a sum of five different things of the form v, t v tensor v whereas the ones that are arising from e here are just of this form they're e wedge f so they're the 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 the, the primitive the the obvious basic elements in wedge 2 of E. Okay, and now what does that mean for this matrix? It means that this matrix, uh, so, um, you know, this is really the Plücker matrix. The matrix P has rank, uh, now what do I mean to say? has rank 2. So, uh, so you know, as, as, as I said earlier, everybody does linear algebra as part of an undergraduate course, and in linear algebra you do things like symmetric 
uh, quadratic forms, uh, symmetric bilinear forms and quadratic forms, and uh, uh, determinants. But you don't usually do uh, wedge, uh, wedge forms, skew symmetric forms, in so much detail. And so you don't have so much... Uh, so let's uh, imagine the point 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Right? This gets mapped to the matrix P, which is 0, 1, minus 1, 0, and then 0 everywhere else. Right? And this is a matrix of rank 2. So, uh, uh, if you take a skew matrix, if you take a skew matrix of uh, a, a, a skew 2n by 2n matrix, then it's known that it's known that uh, so, so, sorry, let's take a a skew M times M matrix. It's known that determinant of, so if I take it, let's call it M. Determinant of M is zero if M is odd. Yes? So just think about calculating. Uh, so in the one by one case, a one by one matrix, which is skew symmetric, is the zero matrix. A 3x3 by, three by three matrix is, it looks like this, C minus B, A, 0, 0, 0, and then minus C, B, minus A. Right? This is a general 3x3 uh, three three skew matrix. Calculate its determinants. You get C, A, B, and then you get minus C, A, B, and then you get all the other terms are 0. Right? It's known that de determinant of M is Fafian of M squared if M is even. Where Pha of M is Fafian. Okay, so I'm only going to tell you what Fafian is in the 4x4 four four case. So in the 4x4 four four case, this is M... Uh, 1, 2, M, 3, 4, minus M, 1, 3, M, 2, 4, plus M, 1, 4, M, 2, 3. Okay, so in this case, what I'm going to do is I calculate this product minus this product plus this product. Right? That's called the Pfaffian of this matrix. So there, there's a 4x4 four four matrix, and I'm calculating its Pfaffian. So, uh, you know, when you calculate a 2x2 two two minor of a matrix, of a 2x2 two two matrix, you have to do two things. This one's got three terms in it. Okay? So, if you think about the subscripts here, the subscripts are I, J, K, L, for all possible permutations of ij, k, l, and, uh, and, and m. Right? So it's just, it's just, there's a rule, which is exactly the same as the rule for writing down the determinant, which is a sum over the symmetric group. Right? And then this one here is an odd permutation, and so there's a minus sign here. This one is an even permutation. 1, 4, 2, 3 is an even permutation of 1, 2, 3, 4. And so this is a plus sign. So if you do this properly, if you just think about the formula I said, uh, you know, uh, this is the Pfaffian. So, so in other words, the, uh, the, the, the rule, that I, the Plucker equalities that I'm writing down there are really just the equation, are just the thing saying this, this vector here in the, is a one, that's a one-dimensional vector space in the projective space of wedge 2 of V and it consists of tensors of rank 2. It consists of uh, skew tensors which if you write them out in any basis will be of rank 2. So they will look like this. Right? And so, uh, you know, I've, I've told you the particular equations, I've told you some of the, some of the consequences of them. 
So uh, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to take this subject any further. This is just, uh, this is just uh, uh, you know, one little interesting, interesting topic in algebraic geometry. I assure you, if you study algebraic geometry further, you'll, uh, you'll, see, you'll see a lot more of these Grassmannians and a lot more of these uh, Fathians, especially if you're... So, uh, for example, there was a seminar yesterday by Bernd Sturmfels where... You know, this was sort of the basic input, primary ingredients in, uh, in, in his talk. Okay, so uh, I think this is a jolly interesting subject. And, uh, you know, there are lots of places, lots of other places in algebraic geometry where we'll see the same Grassmannians coming, uh, com c coming up. So I use, them, I use them a lot in my own work. But they also turn up in other, other contexts. So there are some, several things I haven't explained. Maybe uh, when, uh, when we get the notes of the lecture course written up, we, I can add some material and you can read a little bit more. So I hope eventually to write some more chapters to uh, the book UAG. And I hope uh, I, I think some of this will be in it. Okay. Any questions? Any more? Any people want to know more about what I've said? So there's no lecture next, next uh, this Thursday. Next, the next lecture is Tuesday one week from now.